Welcome back everybody to another episode of The Road Chose Me. Here it is, this is my new Overland vehicle. Well, almost. Let's get into the details of that in a minute, but as you can see, I'm pretty excited. It has been a monumental effort. Michael Fuchs is the genius behind this design and this build. He's been at it for over three years. He's been working seven days a week since October to have this thing ready in time for Overland Expo West which starts today when you guys see this video. We're not 100% sure we're gonna have it there for the show. We're still working on some things. We're doing our best, but let's get into all the details on this thing. I am excited. It's time to finally show you what has been in the works for all of this time. So as you guys know, I've been at this Overland game for a little while now. I've spent quite a few years on the road around the world, and I had some really specific criteria for my fourth Overland build. So the first one, little two-door TJ Wrangler, I drove from Alaska to Argentina. I lived in a ground tent, it worked perfectly fine, but I did get sick of living in a ground tent. Second vehicle, integrated pop-up roof, interior living, fridge, kitchen, all the way around Africa for three years. That thing was incredible. To this day, I think it is the best overland vehicle I've ever had. Third vehicle, time to tackle Australia. I built a Jeep Gladiator, really nice kitchen setup, tons of storage, extra fuel, tons of water capacity so that I could get, get as remote as possible in Australia. That vehicle was fantastic for the job, but it definitely wasn't a four seasons vehicle. I didn't want to travel in that anywhere where it you know, snows or where it rains a lot. So it's time now for the fourth Overland vehicle that I've ever built or been a part of, and it is this. This one right behind me, this is a 2020 Jeep Wrangler. So this was a four-door Jeep before Michael Fuchs, who I mentioned earlier, came up with this plan. And so Michael is on Instagram. His name is Wabi Sabi Overland. I've got it on the screen and I'll put a link in the description as well. You definitely need to check out his Instagram. He's got lots of photos all the way back in the design phases, all the way through the build of how he put this thing together. And his creative genius is kind of impressive. Not only can he design things like this in CAD, he also has the skills to manufacture all of this. So all of the carbon fiber, all of the composites, all of the fiberglass, Michael did all of that himself by hand. Plus he machined all of the metal pieces, all of the bracketry, all of the interface that combines it onto the Jeep in a structural and rigid way. Again, Michael did all of that by himself with of course the help of his wife, Yvonne. They have been working immensely hard on this thing. And it's a really long story, but these guys have actually had a few different vehicles over the years. They built a really cool Unimog that they took up to Alaska. They tried out an LMTV for a little while. They even had a Pinzengauer. So these guys have lived in and traveled in some pretty cool overland vehicles. And something that I find really fascinating about their story is they came to the conclusion that bigger is not automatically better. While they loved the Unimog and it was incredible, it was actually so big that it detracted a little bit from their travels. And they said, what would happen if you tried to build a more modest sized travel vehicle? They still wanted the interior living space. They still wanted to be able to escape the elements but they didn't want the footprint, they didn't want the gas consumption of the Unimog. You know, the tires on that thing were like $1,000 each, they were telling me, not true on this. So anyway, that's the long way of saying, Michael sat down with his crazy scheming and came up with this plan to build a Jeep Wrangler into a living camper. And it was a year and a half ago, Michael started messaging me and saying, hey Dan, do you think this is feasible? given your travel experience, is this something that you think can work? And we went back and forward for many, many, many months. And at some point I worked up the courage and I said, Michael, do you think you'd be able to build one for me? And so here we are. This one is Michael's due to a mess up in my timing and my scheduling. My Jeep is actually sitting just over there. And in the coming weeks and months, we're going to turn what is basically right now a stock Jeep Wrangler into another one of these. So these will be the first two prototype vehicles where we're gonna learn lessons. We're gonna learn, is this actually big enough? Does this meet all of our criteria? We're kind of both of the opinion, there's really only one way to find out. And that way is to actually build it and to actually use it. 
And so this one is a sport, it is a six speed, it has the 3.6 litre gas engine, and the Jeep itself is relatively stock. No driveline modifications, no suspension lift right now, relatively modest tires, because this is designed to be a travel vehicle that will travel tens of thousands of miles up to the Arctic Ocean, maybe down the Pan American Highway. Who knows, in fact, where it's going to go? The most important thing, though, is that it's going to go. That's why it was built. It wasn't built to look good at SEMA. It was built to actually be used. And you can see the way that it was done, it is, or was, a four-door Jeep Wrangler that now has been converted. These are carbon fiber and fiberglass composite panels, commonly called two core two. There is a core in the middle of those for insulation value. Obviously a really nice door, some great Arctic turn windows. It's got a departure cut on the rear so that the departure angle isn't affected too much. These really great LED tail lights, reverse lights. The reverse camera is at the bottom, obviously a high mount. You will probably be starting to wonder, yes, it is a pop-up. The roof will pop up in the future, although that has not been finished yet. So as it stands right now, the roof is buckled down and will stay buckled down. Uh, rhino rack roof rack up the front here with the spare tire on it. And then swinging around, we've got an AEV snorkel and mine will have many more uh, add-on extras, but the basic idea will be exactly the same as this. And so the box that is on the back, Michael and I have just really been trying to wrap our heads around it in the last couple of days. That thing is more than twice the footprint of the bed of a Jeep Gladiator. If you put the beds side by side, both of them would fit inside of that. Plus you obviously get the height, so you get the volume. Once the roof is popped, that's gonna be really, really incredible internal living space. And I will tell you too, full honesty, the interior right now is completely empty. We have not built a single cabinet. We've had many design discussions about how that will go, but right now it's just getting it finished for Overland Expo. So it is an empty box. There is a ginormous pass through between the two front seats, but again, it just opens out into an empty box right now. In the future, there might be a diesel heater in there. There might be hot water. There will definitely be running water with a sink, with a fridge, kind of a, you know, a kitchen area, lots of storage, and then obviously a bed of some sort as well. I think Michael and Yvonne are leaning towards sleeping downstairs in theirs, whereas I'm still really excited to sleep upstairs, much like I did in my Africa Jeep. So for me, I love the idea of sleeping kind of under the canvas. So Michael's already had some thoughts and some ideas about how you would be able to design a bed that can be up at where the roof is now, but then can move out of the way when the roof is up so you can stand up and walk around essentially. So that is at a really high level, that is what Michael has designed and built and poured an enormous amount of effort into. And I have to say, I think it is immensely impressive and I've just been thinking back, trying to run through, you know, my original criteria, what did I want out of this vehicle? So a lot of us said it has to have strong four wheel drive. Mine is in fact a Rubicon, so it has locking differentials, no problem at all. It has to fit inside a shipping container, which this does. Michael designed it specifically to fit inside of a container. That was criteria. It has to obviously be commonly available to North Americans. I bought mine off Craigslist, so anyone can go out and buy one of these vehicles and outfit it how they please. Parts availability, in the countries that Jeep does exist, these, this vehicle with this engine and this transmission does exist. So while maybe Jeep doesn't exist in every country in the world, certainly they are around and you can get parts for these things. As well as that, I always like to say that Rock Auto will ship anywhere in the world in you know a couple of days, so it's not that big of a deal. So those were the high level goals, but then my more specific goals. I said originally I wanted more interior living space. That was my number one criteria. And I think you'll agree, this is by far the most interior living space I've ever had, especially once the roof is open. I can see myself spending quite a few snowy days in there, quite a few windy days based on where I'm planning on going in the world. I think this is going to be absolutely key. So first criteria, more interior living space. That is definitely a yes on this vehicle. Second one for me was better gas mileage, better fuel consumption. And I've gone for a bit of a wild decision. My Rubicon that's sitting over there is actually the Eco Diesel. So it is a three liter Eco Diesel with the eight speed automatic transmission. 
and I've already driven it quite a few thousand miles. I had to drive it from the other side of the country. Up until now, the worst tank that I've put through it got 25 miles a gallon, and the best tank was 29 miles a gallon. So that is unheard of in my mind for a Jeep. Obviously it's not outfitted yet and it doesn't have you know, the wind resistance of this thing. So I expect that will go down a bit, but I think it's pretty safe to say that I will be better than 20 miles a gallon when I'm on a trip. And obviously a modern diesel engine does have its downsides for global travel. I'm certain we're gonna get into that in a future video. If you guys have got questions about it, you guys have concerns, put them down in the comments. I anticipate doing a lot of videos in the future about more of the details. But I think overall second criteria, you know, better fuel mileage than ever. I think it's pretty safe to say this ticks that box getting right now 25 to 29 miles a gallon. I'm really happy with that. And then the third criteria was a better payload than I've ever had before, which will give me the ability to carry more drinking water, more food, more water, which basically means I can get more remote. And that is the one where maybe I haven't succeeded or in fact, if you look at it sideways, maybe I have in a strange way. So what actually is incredible about this vehicle, because Michael has such an incredible design eye and such experience designing carbon fiber and composite structures, he took so much weight out of this, as you can imagine, all of that metal that was cut away, the doors, the tailgate, all of that is gone. That was over 600 pounds taken out of it. The camper box on the back, weighs less than that. So in fact, this vehicle has a higher payload than when it rolled out of the factory. Kind of interesting, kind of a strange way to look at it, but I think it is really fascinating to realize by throwing away so much of the factory weight, like we don't need the rear doors, let's just not have them. Instead, let's use carbon fiber and composite, which is much lighter. We've actually now got more payload to play with. And it's true, it is a Jeep, it is not an enormous payload. This is not a one ton truck. You know, this does not have a 5,000 pound payload. But again, the whole idea was to keep it smaller, keep it kind of lighter and more agile. And so while I may not have 100% succeeded at more payload, I did say to go with the meatloaf attitude of two out of three ain't bad. And so I think in that aspect, I've done pretty well to get two of my major criteria and in kind of a sideways way, I got the third one as well. So there it is. That is a lot of rambling to try and introduce what is the most exciting vehicle I've ever been lucky to be a part of. I'm so thankful to Michael and Yvonne for including me, for uh, showing me what it's all about. And I've been lucky enough, I've, I've turned a few wrenches on this thing. I'm, I'm proud to say I put the wheels on. Um, I helped Michael put the roof rack on and Michael did everything else literally everything else. So it's been a huge project and uh, lots and lots of details to come. The plan is we're hoping to get it to Overland Expo when you see this video. If the stars align, there are some things we have to work out. And then after that, in the coming months, we will convert mine into this same thing. And my plan is to document that and to go over all of your questions and show you what that process looks like. So that's all coming in the future. If you do wanna see more, you wanna get more involved in this thing, subscribe to the channel, give this a thumbs up. There is a lot of content coming. And then, of course, there are the adventures. Let's see where we're gonna take this thing. Somewhere new, somewhere I've never been before. Here it is. If you do make it out to Overland Expo, swing by and say hello. I've got a booth. I'll put the number of the booth on the screen and a map. Come and find me. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Overland Expo in Flagstaff, Arizona, May 19 to 21. Come and check it out. Crawl all over it. Tell me what you think.